Hello there. This is Mrs. Lyon. I am recording this video for you guys in case you were absent or you need a recap on all of the things that we've covered so far in this lesson on watercolor and India ink. We are reviewing our understanding of line value and texture throughout this lesson. So it might be a little bit repetitive. That's just because we're going to do this over the course of a couple of days. Um, so for example, Thursday, we talked about watercolor. Um, and then Friday, we talked on India inks. And then today, um, Monday, we are talking about the final project. And so this video is posted on Monday. And so that's why I'm referring to it as Monday. So yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so we talked about watercolor, India ink, and then our final project. Um, the objectives for this entire lesson was to first create three experimental artworks that effectively use India ink and or watercolor and utilize the elements of line value and texture. Um, and then the final composition, which is presented to you guys on uh, Monday or was presented to you guys on Monday, I can create a mixed media composition using watercolor and India inks while effectively demonstrating the elements of line, value, and texture. The vocabulary terms so far are value, texture, line, dip pen, staining, mixed media, hard cakes, pigment, India ink, and watercolor. So first off, we talked on watercolor. Um, and I presented to the class how exactly do we work with watercolor and we work with watercolor essentially by adding water right um, it's in its name. And value is extremely present in watercolor, as you can see, like here in the ears, uh, this is something that a lot of people struggled with on the exam, so I wanted to review it your vocabulary test. Um, but essentially shading or the lightness and darkness of a color or tone so here in the ears of the fox, you can see like the dense. The density or the opacity of this color slowly comes out with um, this value, which creates the face of the fox through watercolor techniques. Same thing over here, if we look at the cars and the shadows and the contrast that we're having here between like the light and the dark really represents the value of the images here. Moreover, uh, texture is extremely important. For example, in these two images, uh, we know that this elephant is an elephant because of the textures that are present in the trunk, in the ears, even with like the splattered painting that's going on with the watercolor, it provides elements of texture that are interesting for the viewers. As well as in the image of the flowers, we can see all of the texture. And if I were to reach out and grab those flowers, I know that it would be scratchy and it would feel like a plant. It wouldn't just feel like, you know, nothing <laughs> because of the texture that's there and present in the images. Obviously it's not real texture, it's imaginary because this is a painting, but it's important to utilize through our usage of painting with watercolor. Uh, we also have line, which is extremely important. And this artist, which I'm not gonna pronounce their name because I would butcher it, is an animation artist. And we talked about how his usage of line here and like the muscles of the shark show a dramatic effect that without those lines, we wouldn't know that this is a buff shark, right? And without the usage of this implied line here in the bore, we wouldn't look through this whole image. And then likewise, in this one, there's a large stick that runs through the composition and this intertwining red rope, which uh, leads the viewer's eye all the way around the composition and lets us look at everything through the usage of lines. We also watched this fun video on watercolor paints. Um, it's in the links for you guys, if you would like to watch the watercolor paint, it just talks about hard cakes and essentially how they came about um, and who invented them, why they're important and why they're actually affordable. And also the type of watercolor paints that we're using are praying. And praying is one of the famous names of the people who invented watercolor hard cakes. And the hard cakes are these circular things inside there. Um, and so the brief history of watercolor that the video talks about is that essentially the cave paintings are the original works of art which show watercolor painting techniques. And that was in France is where this image comes from. Uh, so Europe is where they originated. And watercolor have been around for forever uh, since that period. And it gained a large popularity during the Renaissance which became widely popular then. And that's why it kind of is still an art form we appreciate today. 
so we talked about hard cakes just a little bit there from the video, and those are these over here. But pigments are also important to understand. Pigments are essentially minerals of a color that are ground up. And this right here, this hard cake that's created with honey, is when you add pigment, honey, and water, and essentially it solidifies into this flexible hard cake. So pigments are important to note because that's essentially what we are using this entire time with water and then getting that pigment out. Um, invented by William Reeves. And then here are some of the materials that we can use for watercolor brushes. So before you start experimenting with watercolor, we talked about that you're gonna use the experimental white paper, the three by three size. You need a watercolor palette, which essentially is just like the watercolor set. The uh, palette is one-sided of the like lid of the pal watercolor palette. And then the watercolor is on the other side with the hard cakes. You also need a cup of water, paintbrushes, towels, and keep in mind to be imaginative and flexible with yourself since this is an experiment. Um, here are some techniques that are useful with watercolor. Watercolor is gonna dry a lot lighter when it's applied than when like, dries a lot lighter than when it was originally applied. So it's gonna be approximately two times lighter. So if it's really, really dense navy blue, that navy blue is gonna get a little bit lighter and a little bit less opaque than when you originally put it down. Layering is important to consider because of the opacity, so like the density, um, the transparency is important as well, so like the lighter areas in order to get value in our images, just like we saw with the fox before. Some techniques you'll see in the demo in just a second is drips, bleeds, blotting, and washes. So essentially, um, this is a water-based paint, so you need to learn how to manipulate water. Um, slowly adding pigment in order to stain the paper. And when I say slowly adding pigment to stain the paper, this is what I'm referring to, this last bullet point here, number one, two, three, four, five. Um, staining refers to how we can easily remove watercolor paint from a support. So a support being our paper. Um, and once it's been applied to the paper, it has to completely dry. And once you put down pigment, you're never gonna get it fully back up. You're going to get a transparent color, a transparent color if you, do a wet stroke on a piece of paper and then quickly pick it up with a paper towel, it'll be more transparent. Um, opposite to that, if you wanted to get a more opaque color, the staining would be more dense. You would want to have more pigment in your water in order to stain the paper darker. So that's important to keep in mind, especially when we move on to India inks. Um, so understanding experiments are due Monday. Um, and then what medium we were using in this lesson was watercolor first to experiment with. Here are some of the additional resources that we talked about before, but I kind of want to present to you now um, that demo on watercolor. So let me scoot this over and let's take a look at this video. So here you can see I have my palette, I have water, and then on this side is my actual um, like mixing area and then the hard cakes are in there. So I'm gonna press play and I'm gonna kind of pull us through this video but you'll see as I kind of start to go, I sketched out my image beforehand for my final uh, project that I was working on in this image. But for your experiments, I just want you guys to kind of play with the technique. So I added water to this hard cake over here and I mixed kind of what color I wanted. And I'm using a wet to dry technique. So currently my brush is wet and the paper is dry. And as I slowly add color, you'll see that I'm able to pull it through the water because water attracts itself. So for example, if I go and rinse out my brush, which I'm about to, and pick up new pigment and then add it to that water, it's gonna get pulled across the water. And you'll see that here in just a second. And these kind of bleeds can be really fun to experiment with. Um, and it's also fun to do kind of, and this would be the wet on wet. It's also kind of fun to do that dry on dry over and over again. So I'm getting more pigment. I'm making a new color so that I can do that wet to dry technique. So I have a wet brush and I'm going to go in an area that is dry and be able to create new lines. Adding value to the top of these carrots, which are what they are going to be, um, by slowly adding in pigment to the with wet on wet. So I have the wet lines after I did the dry technique, 
and then add in pigment after that. And you can kind of experiment with the watercolor and what you can do with it and how fun it can be. Oh, and then here I did a little bit of the blotting. So I put down a lot of pigment, but I wanted it to be more transparent. So I got a paper towel and I picked that ink back up so that I could stain the paper less than what originally it was going to be. But yeah, fun techniques to play with. Here's some more staining I did with like adding after I did water. And so that's watercolor for you. Um, if you have any questions, you can totally come to me while we're in class, like no worries. But let's move on to talking about India ink. So that was our lesson one that we talked about on Thursday. Um, and then we talked about India inks and I had everybody pull out their phones and I asked you guys to look up India ink painting and you guys found some fun things. And then I went on to share about what we found. So I found um, this fun quote by James Gurney. And you can look up the full thing online if you want to just by typing in his name and putting an ink painting poem. I'm sure you'll find the whole uh, quote. But life is an ink painting, which must be executed once and for all time and without hesitation, without intellection and no corrections are permissible or possible. I just thought this was a fun quote because it's important to keep in mind that when we're working with India inks, just like watercolor, it's a stain and black is black. So as soon as you put that harsh pigment down in that dense opacity that it has, it's never gonna come up lightly. So you have to keep that in mind when you're working with India inks. And we're gonna review a little bit about texture, line and value again. So here, there's a fun image of this kitty cat. And this kitty cat's got texture of fluffiness. And over here, this one of lines got a whole bunch of like hatch marks that give us a lot of texture and movement in the image because of the usages of line. Likewise, we have value again reviewed with India inks. And here, the densest or most opaque part of the image is the tail of the chicken. And then as you kind of go through the chicken, it gets lighter and more transparent, giving us that value that we really need in order to see clear images and works of art. Then we watched this really funny video that I liked about Gyotaku painting. And if you would like to watch this video, it is also in the links under India ink painting. Um, it just talks about fish painting and the art of Japanese fish printing. So if you wanna check that out, go ahead and watch that video. But to review what it does talk about, basically India inks come from China, um, but the word India ink comes from the reasoning is because it was in China and then it moved to India and then India sold it to Europe. Hence its name, India inks. It was confused with Indian and it is actually India. Um, the practice of writing an ink and sharp pointed needle comes uh, from the Tamali language in South India. So this is some fun calligraphy that you can see of the Tamalian language. Um, and also keep in mind that India ink is an all natural material or medium. It's made of bones, tar, pitch, and other substances. So that's essentially the pigment that's grounded up in order to create India ink. It's also what we commonly use for tattooing. Um, so if you've ever done a stick and poke tattoo, India ink is going to be your best option to do that because it's that's what it's commonly used for. Fun fact, we use it more now for comic books and comic book strips, but because you can put it on your body, India ink has also been used in medical applications. So this image here in the middle is a picture of a person's spine and the black kind of running through here is a part of this image's body or this person's body with India ink being injected in it in order to visualize blood vessels. So that's fun. Dip pens are the type of material that are most important when we work with India inks. Uh, traditional calligraphy is done through like dip pens or fountain pens. Fountain pens, uh, not to be confused with dip pens, fountain pens you in, insert like a cartridge in the interior and it slowly fountains out ink. And contrary to that, what we're using is dip pens, which is when you actually dip the pen in ink continuously in order to re- pick up pigment in order to put that down on your piece of paper. So before you start working with uh, India inks, you need to get these materials. Pipette is the most uh, one to keep in mind. If you do work with a pipette, uh, make sure not to fill it up past like a little tiny amount, because uh, if you do use more ink, it's just going to be wasteful because India ink is going to go a really, really long way. So a tiny dot of ink will be a dramatic amount um, in the long run. Same thing with watercolor, keep in mind layering techniques, lighter values are farther away. 
You can use any type of uh, paint brushes or ink pens or quill pens. Um, and then the techniques are the same because it's still a water-based paint. And also India inks will stain your clothes since they're used for tattooing. Keep in mind, if you get it on your hand, it's gonna take a while for it to wash off. And if you get it on your clothes, it's probably not ever gonna come out. Um, and please, please, please do not contaminate the containers of India ink with water. That's just gonna ruin the ink and dilute it so it won't be useful to anybody else. So experiments are still due Monday and you should use India ink for this lesson. So let's go check out that video. So if we come over here to my first uh, starting of my final project, I had all three of my experiments finished. And let me go back a little bit. So those are my all three of my experiments. I finished them. And then you can kind of see here, I start by sketching out what I wanted to create. And then after I had finished that sketch, I started taking out my India ink. And I see I'm using this pipette very, very slowly. Um, I want to get a tiny bit of ink in my palette. See, it's only like a couple of drops and I barely go like an inch of, into my pipette to pull out my ink. Then after I'm done with that, I put the lid back on and set it aside because I don't really need it anymore. And here is the pen. So there's different pens. Right now, I'm currently holding the one in my right hand upside down. So that is the back side of the pen. You want to make sure that the other side is facing you when you're writing, because if it's not, you won't be able to ink the paper properly. So that's the back side of both of those pens where that like gold piece is in the back. Um, and then you can see the silver present. And this pen, the more pointy one, I'm currently holding it face up right there. So that's the top of the pen and that's the face that you would want facing you while you're writing. So now that I have my drip, I've explained the pens, I'm slowly going to add water now and I'm using a paintbrush to add ink to my water. So it's filled with ink now and then I'm going to add it and see how dramatic it gets in color with just a tiny bit of ink. And after washing out my brush, even though I just put it in water, I also got my just regular water with pigment in it. And then I made a mistake here and filled it entirely black by washing out my pipette in it. So don't make that mistake. I learned that through experimentation. Um, and then I went on to continue working using different pens in order to get the lines that I wanted. So I sketched out my image and I started with India ink. And you can kind of see here, I'm doing that wet on wet technique and slowly adding pigment. Those dark lines that I created are gonna stay that dark. And I'll just kind of let the video flow from here on out and you guys can kind of check out what I made. And that was me working with India ink. So this is kind of my final product of me just experimenting and messing around. Um, and then later I went in with watercolor. So let's talk about the final project now. Let's go back here. All right, so the final project, final composition. So all of the mediums that we've talked about so far, obviously we're gonna use them in our final project. Um, so you, once you finish, all three of your experimental artworks and you understand India ink and watercolor, and you've utilized elements of line value and texture, I want you to start your final project using both mediums to create your own composition. So for example, I can create a mixed media composition using watercolor and India inks while effectively demonstrating the elements of line, value, and texture. That is the final composition or final project of this lesson. So once you finished your three experiments and you've checked them off with me, it's time to start. So you, how do you start your final project? I'm gonna tell you. Um, this is how we're gonna begin. You're gonna need all of these materials um, because we're creating a mixed media artwork. Mixed media, meaning multiple mediums and mediums are the materials that you use to create art. So for example, a pencil is a material and that's a medium. So a mixed media includes multiple different kinds of it. So because we're using pencil, watercolor, India ink and dip pens, it's a mixed media artwork. And question, what should go first, ink or watercolor? I honestly think it's up to you. It's a personal preference. Some artists choose to ink before adding watercolor and some artists prefer ink after they've applied their watercolor. 
here's what I made. I made a sketch first. Here's my carrots. Uh, so sketch, and then I watercolored, and then I India inked. And in the last video I just saw you, you saw me India inking first. And I'm going to show you what turned out when I added the watercolor after. So this is one example of what you can do. Pencil, watercolor, India inks. I did learn the India inks kind of were bleeding a little bit for me, but maybe that was just my technique. Um, but you can also ink and then watercolor. So these both were definitely inked first and watercolor was af added after. So here's like first with ink and then adding the watercolor. And then the ink of the face kind of bleeding out this way. And then they added the blue, it seems like after. These are the opposite. Definitely looks like watercolor and then inking. Um, a lot of splatter, splatter painting and then finding details in the images you've kind of created abstractly from watercolor and creating things out of them. And I did do that technique with one of my experiments. Uh, for example, it was this one. So that one there, I watercolored first and then I was like, huh, what fun images can I find in it? And that's what I found, so yeah. And then lastly, we have the entire project outline. So making sure you have all three experiments because they are worth 25 points of your final project. And then 75 points of your project is that final composition. So 25 for your experiments and then 75 for the final work. Your final work has to be a minimum of a nine by 12. You can be bigger if you would like. And keep in mind, you don't have to show me a sketch before you start your final. You just need to finish your three practice pieces. As soon as I have you checked off for all three of those, I will double check and I will give you your final piece of paper so you can just get to work and have fun with the mediums. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoy uh, the mixed media project with watercolor and India ink. I hope you found Gyotaku painting hilarious. Um, let's get our final projects in by Monday. And you can find these assignment requirements on Canvas. So if you're ever confused, check Canvas. And if you wanna see how I ended out with that video, let me show you guys really quick. So this is the final thing that I made. So after I had India inked, I added some watercolor after, and I think it turned out kind of fun. So, Right, this is the one I did with India or watercolor first and then India ink. And then this is the one I did India ink and then watercolor. So I kind of flip flopped, but I'm adding watercolors just intentionally after kind of to put some emphasis in this one because I wanted the gnome to stand out because I think it's cute. But yeah, I hope you guys have fun with this project. Um, try to get your projects in by the, uh, the Monday of the 8th. Monday of the 8th. Have fun, good luck. If you need any questions answered, come find me. <laughs>